Ellen White, um, uh, social media is really a testimony. I just break that out right now. It's really a testimony. Okay. And this is very, very common in the churches, really in, in different kind of churches. Uh, it used to be very common in Adventist churches. The Adventist church is not a high church tradition. You understand what I'm saying? High church is like an Anglican church, a Catholic church, with a big pipe organ, and you know, and, and incense, and they're walking around. Okay, um, Abbott is a part of the Restoration movement that said, "Let's get back to the Bible and do things the way things were done in the Bible." Okay? What method is it? Very different. You had magisterium, and you had priests, and all these things that were to be between you and God and help you, but really they got in the way. And Protestantism took that altar where you have this priest and all that stuff, and they said, no, what we put in the center is a pulpit. And for in front, often in front, in the front of the church, is actually a Bible. To say that the center of what we're doing here has to do with the proclamation of the Word of God. It has to do with this relationship that we as human beings have to God, created by His Word, we're recreated by His Word. And this is an experience that all of us, God wants to bring all of us into a personal relationship. And you can go to God yourself. You can learn about Him yourself and know Him for yourself. And the testimony meaning is, uh, social meaning is part of the process of responding to God in that relationship. And I'm actually going to, I'm going to go to the Bible first. Um, can I get that? I have my phone and got it down. Here I have a, a book. Here you go. Could you go with me? We talk about sacrifices. You know, in Romans it says, we want to give ourselves to God. A living sacrifice, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go, though, to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Mm -hmm. You know, the book of Hebrews is Paul, Paul so wanted to reach his people. He talks about it in the book of Romans. And here, in the book of Hebrews, he got his king. And he made his plea, his appeal, going back to the law again and again, showing that Jesus is a better priesthood. Jesus is a better sacrifice. Jesus, Jesus is the one who saves. And out of all of that, then he says, you know what? Here's the deal. You're so invested on being a Jew. It's it's you, but guess what? You better come outside of that. And there is Hebrews 13. Okay. Verses starting in verse 10. That's what that means. We have an altar where they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest are burnt without the camp. For that reason, or wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. He suffered outside. An indication that his sacrifice was for the sins of mankind, for the world. Okay? Let us therefore go forth unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. Christianity was fairly unpopular. In the time, this was very for sure, particularly among Jews. But it was also very unpopular among pagans. I remember, I remember in that book of Acts, they described how I know that everywhere this sect or this cult, pardon me, interpret it now, I know everywhere that this cult, these Christians, is <laughs> spoken against. So if you're spoken against, that's okay, you're in a good problem. If you're being attacked, that's probably a good sign. It certainly could be a good sign. It's not proof of anything in itself. But if you're being attacked, Jesus said, if you're being persecuted for righteousness, say, rejoice in the exceeding of that. Therefore, let us go unto him, to Jesus. It's more valuable. Our connection with him is more valuable. Bearing his reproach. Does it sound like you're being quiet, like secretly? Like the point is, you are a Christian. You lend it on him. For we have here no continuing city. Look at verse 15 now. By him, by him, therefore, let us offer what? Are there sacrifices in the New Testament? Are there sacrifices that we bring? Yeah, we bring our bodies 
that we sacrifice. We're going to sacrifice our offering to be offered. And we bring the sacrifice of praise. Let us therefore offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. Okay? There are things that we owe to God. We pray to God. But one other thing that we owe to him is a confession of his faithfulness. It's a testimony of his working in our lives. It's saying, amen to the truth, yes, but it's saying, it's, it's being willing to get to say, God is working upon my heart in this way, but it's pray for me. There's a lot of texts that, what did I do that? I think it was a big start. A lot of texts we get around to bear on this. How about, how about this though in Matthew chapter 10? Matthew chapter 10. Jesus is affirming uh, a wonderful message. How valuable are the value of spirit? More valuable than spirit. Here in verse 32 and 33, he says something significant. Whosoever there shall, therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is but whosoever shall deny me before men, him also will I deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Which would you prefer? <laughs> is it too much? Jesus who died on the cross for us, for you. Is it too much for him to ask that we affirm him? That we say thanks to him? That we give ourselves to him and that we express that in our church relationship, that we express that before others. Unashamedly. Right? Paul said that, right? I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God and the salvation. Not ashamed. Right? Too often we're ashamed, right? Or we're quiet. Or the processes of the church have not prepared us or even given us the opportunity or showed us that we should give the sacrifice of praise, that we should give a testimony. And then we must have a testimony to bear. Let's go to one other text. Romans chapter 10. Oh, how important it is to be. Any How about this? And Paul is contrasting the righteousness of the law with the righteousness of the divine. The righteousness which is by faith, verse 6, speaks on this wise, say not in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven and accomplish your salvation. Find out to heaven. Jacob couldn't do that. God had to present a ladder to him. He had no way. He didn't have a rocket ship. He couldn't do a Richard Branson. <laughs> the Richard Branson just made it to the first heaven. He didn't make it to paradise. Say not in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven, or who shall descend into thee? What does the word of faith say? What does the word of God say? It says the word is nigh you. It is even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That, what is it? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. saved. What, was the, what was the second word in that verse? The word, the word that we preach to you, Paul says, is that what? That shalt. Now that's not the second word in verse 9. That if. 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 What does that mean? Condition. It's a condition, isn't it? That if you confess with your mouth. The Lord Jesus then shall believe in your heart that God raised it from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. This is important. Absolutely it's important. It's important that you come into a relationship with God and that you're willing 
among his people to testify of his goodness. And, and before anybody that you have that opportunity, we should always be ready to give an answer of a hope that is within us with fear and trembling. So that is really what a testimony we have. There's so many verses we can talk about this. You know, when, when Paul talks about the sacrifice, he's just building on, on Jeremiah 33, 11. And uh, Psalm 54, which compares sacrifice and praise. Well, let's look at, let's, you know, there's, there's thanks we can give to God. There's talking of uh, praising his, his characteristics. How about Psalm 145, 9 and 12? Let's look at that real quick. Psalm 145. Brother David, yeah. I just mentioned something in that verse in Hebrews, in my marginal reading, it says, for the Greek, it says, you know, for, for giving thanks to his name, it says, in the Greek, confessing to his name. Ah, confessing yeah. to his name. I so, that. it uses the, the same word. Confessing, that's the same, same uh, mm -hmm. thing Jesus saying in Matthew chapter 10. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you. Psalm 145, 9 to 12. The Lord is good to all. Is he good to you? Amen. Amen. The lie, the Bible says he's good to all. Amen. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee. Is it right for his works to praise him? You're one of his works. You owe him the sacrifice of praise. All thy works, especially if he's remade you, especially if he's changed your life, especially if he's forgiven you. And set you on a new path. You have something to say for him. Perhaps I pray so. Let's, let's see that tonight. Um, let me finish this. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints, thy saints, thy holy ones shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom. And talk of thy power. Talk of thy power. You have something to say. God gave them a victory in their life. But they couldn't want it on their own strength. It was God's deliverance. It was his salvific work, his sanctifying work in their life. Talk of thy power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. Going down to verse 21, my mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. That's what a testimony is. I'm just going to point you to history uh, and a couple of quotations here. That's what a testimony meaning is all about. It's about that. This is actually only is traveling in Europe. It was very common in American Christianity to have testimony meetings, to have these meetings where believers would not. Uh, covenant meetings where you really come back and kind of originate a church and covenant together to, as the Adventists would, covenant together to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So kind of key components of our faith that they would come together and form a church. But in a testimony, you had an opportunity to re reinstate, to confirm that commitment, to affirm your surrender to the Lord and your desire to keep walking with Him and, and His working upon your life. And maybe confession for you accident or whatever. In Europe, not so much. And again, I think today we've forgotten a lot of us. We found the churches, they were traveling. Some of, them, going to go. Some of the churches, we were to come together for a general meeting in Volvindel, Prussia. She was, she was traveling in Europe. We found the churches in need of help as they were in difficulty. The Lord gave me a testimony for them, and after speaking to them on Sabbath, I advised, as is our custom, a social meeting. A social meeting often would, and see, this is, this is our custom. A social meeting customarily came after an exhortation, a sermon, where you were challenged, where you were spiritually, um, you know, so what do I say? There's this admonishment from God, and you have an opportunity to respond to that message. That message really spoke to me. Here's something that spoke to me out of the message. So, I advised, as is our custom, a social meeting after the, after the meeting. Brother Conradi said they had never had a social meeting in this place. And with the exception of two or three who had visited Basel, Switzerland, 
knew not what a social meeting was. They usually assembled and prayed together when they had no ministry and then parted for their homes. I advised that there be a move made then and there. And the result was we had an excellent social meeting and the spirit of the Lord was certainly in our midst. You know what This is As I spoke, the melting spirit of the Lord was in the midst of us. We then had a social meeting. This was a new exercise to those who had newly come to our faith. But Elder Corliss called upon one after another to be witnesses for the Lord Jesus. Until all but one of the leaders bore testimony. Although the social meeting is a new thing, yet they are learning in the school of and are overcoming fear and trembling. We keep before them the fact that the social meeting will be the best meeting in which they may be trained and educated to be witnesses for Christ. It would be good practice. We could testify about Jesus before our brothers and sisters. It would help us to be free in understanding how we can testify before him, before the church. Mm -hmm. um, one more place here. Oh, this is pretty powerful. This is oh, you know, she's quoting now. We read this text earlier today. Says the prophet, then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written for him, for them that fear the Lord and that thought upon his name. You can see from this text that the burden of the social meeting does not rest upon one individual, but upon all. We are to speak one to another. There is nothing that will so completely kill out the true spirit of devotion and social work as we're not privatizing the devotion. She talks about uh, not having a long, drawn out testimony, 20, 30 minutes of one person. Testimony should be taken. Is it that to the new? Those who see here. Okay. It would be entirely proper okay, for the one who is appointed to lead the meeting to call upon others frequently to take his place and let everyone who names the name of Christ have a testimony to bear in a social meeting. Let it be right to the point relating personal experience as to what God has done for your soul. It's not, it's not a live testimony. We think of a live testimony where you tell your whole story, like when I was a kid, and blah, 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 blah. That's, that's a longer, that's a longer time. Frame. This is a this is a current experience thing. God's done for you this good day. Well, right now, but he's working in your heart right now. That's what a social media is about. No one has right to take up the time and deprive others of opportunity to speak. I'm sorry, I'm taking up too much time for you. No point us with this idea. Mm -hmm. Okay? Amen. Point is this idea. This long sermonizing does not benefit any of the hearers. But while one person should not occupy all the time, there should be no waiting one upon another. Those who have an abundance to say out of meeting should not be found silent in the meeting. Um, as well as everybody should have an opportunity to speak. We have the great principles of salvation revealed in the Word of God, which concern our eternal welfare. And our very souls should be all aglow with the love. We should be ready to speak forth his praises. Christ should abide in our hearts by faith, that we may learn of him and be laborers together with him. We should unitedly go forth, determined through the help of God, to bear testimony to his glory in every act of life. That's really what social media is all about. Bearing testimony to God. Affirming our relationship to Christ our belonging to him and our mutual belonging to each other as brothers and sisters. It's not a time necessary to open up like the secret sin of your life. It may be in general to say, God, you know, God was showing something, but you know, there are things that belong in the closet. Okay? You you praying to God individually. There are secrets in the nobody else in the year. Okay? But there are things, especially 
if they relate to brothers and sisters in a relationship. This is a general group. We don't know each other as well because we come to churches here, there, or whatever. But especially in a local church, this is one of the biggest problems we have right now. In a local church, we're divided. We're scattered. And we're at each other's shows and we talk behind other people's back. And we're talking here and there. And some people are on the board, and other people have ideas, but they're not as important because they're not important. And again. When we're all brothers, Jesus said, it shall not be so among you. You are all brothers. You're all brothers and sisters in the church. And if we were just having social media, we could clear the air. Mm -hmm. I have a bad feeling to a brother's son. Ellen White actually talks about that. She actually had a vision in 1903 where the brethren were in a large meeting, fairly large meeting. And she saw them in a vision. One brother got up and kind of fast, I had already feelings for brother so it's God was sharing me. And he broke down, the other guy got up and, and they embraced and they made things right. And it was reconciliation. I actually saw this once in a business meeting I saw. But I'm just going to sign some of that. Probably not as powerful as this vision, but unfortunately, and at the end of that vision, after there was this great confession and time of revival, and Ellen White woke up and she said, and then God showed me this is what might have been. The only people have been open to the movement of the Holy Spirit. It's too bad. We really need this. Amen. We really need this in our churches. You know, we shouldn't be taking it from you. What did Jesus say? If your brother has all against you, don't finish giving your gift. Go and make things right. First. First. But, by the way, you know, inside of that, this is just a little study. If your brother had a lot against you, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean he was offended, just in feelings. What that means is actually you're wrong. What that means. If he has actually has something against you because you're wrong. That's what that means. Go and make things right. Go and make things right. Okay. All right. So, you know, we, we um, get ready to open this up, okay? Not long, but what can we say to the Lord? How does God do in your life? Maybe here at these meetings, God's impressed you with something. I will speak for myself. Probably can have just but I was very blessed by the Lord Jesus presentation for this presentation. This one. It's convicted. Um, I thought of the work of Elijah. And I thought of my own commitment to be a part of that work called for repentance. And that I felt like I as kind of having a, a call to to give a call for repentance like that, that I would have gone to the cave like Elijah did. And I hadn't really done everything I did. And I prayed God. That's my earnest prayer and my desire to get that on track. To do what God wants me to do. And calling God's people to repentance. That's just mine. That's mine. And keep grateful. As I have, uh, you know, Jesus told one about cares this life. And sometimes we just get, we get tempted and get overwhelmed with those things. Mm -hmm. And we have a faith for the calculation. So I insist in your prayers. That will help you move forward with faith. So, are we having less time in this house? What's, maybe something impressive touched your heart. What is God what blessing to you? So we're going to a confession or you know, something that you want to say for Jesus. This is your opportunity now to offer a sacrifice of praise. So I just want to praise the Lord for this opportunity uh, to partake of, I would say, my very first social meeting. You know, something that hopefully God's people can revive. So praise God. Mm -hmm. I like Brother Chris's messages this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I'll invite us to verse 
like getting up and throw people to talk or and that is like very therapistic exactly what that. But I do I am always impressed by the interest that you said like we do all that to God. Like what he's done for us that should never be in shame. And expressing what he's done for us. Uh, and especially I know this throughout this whole time I've been uh, the first week with my wife because we've been looking at homes and uh, also first of all my current job where to go. And uh, I know John's uh, what is it, the uh, morning man. I was really touched by Isaiah 55 verse 11 where God's word will not return to the world when he says something. And never to doubt. I know we've got a but yeah, never to doubt God's word. And when he says he will protect you, if you do his will, he will make sure that it comes to pass. So, like, with all the doubts or like, questions that we're going to have, God answered our prayers and showed us, giving us clearer indication of where we should be going. Amen. So, I want to thank God for that. And also, this meeting, talking to different people here, and just sharing our Amen. experiences. It's been a really good blessing. Amen. Sunday will be about the great social meeting in heaven. Amen. 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 This is what he needs to me. Yeah. And I'm so glad to give you eternally to give him praise and cast my crown. That is Amen. 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 Am